Hey everybody, it's Gladys. Thanks for joining us today. And what we've got for you tonight is a discussion all about dust. And here joining me, I've got a clan mate of mine, Seawolf. Uh, and I've also got Moonracer, a fellow Redditor, uh, dust player, and former Eve player. Hello. Um, so we've got a whole list of subjects we want to try to get to tonight. And of course, with this game, there's so much to get to that uh, we're going to do the best we can with as many subjects as we can get to. So, uh, Moonracer, go ahead and give us our first one to start us off. Uh, I guess just to get us going, uh, I suppose we should start talking about what makes Dust special uh, and stand out from other shooters out there right now. Um, both, you know, the obvious being tied into Dust, uh, EVE Online. Mm -hmm. Well, if, um, the connectivity between Dust and Eve is uh, unprecedented so far. Um, the connectivity between two different games, from, and one of them being from so long ago, like the, the the shelf life of Eve, you know, it's been steadily supported for a decade now. Um, to have that now connect to a brand new IP is in itself, you know, such an achievement. Um, but as a first-person shooter, Dust in itself, what really separates it is the depth of it. You know, the amount of customization and the amount of effort they put into making its own in-game economy. And uh, when it gets to full release, when we finally have corporation battles and faction warfare, it's going to be on a scale that we haven't seen since Mag, when that came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, right now we're still in beta, of course, so we're not seeing what the full game has to offer yet, but we know a lot of the things that are planned for the game, and a lot is also speculation, but the hard details that we do have is we know generally what direction it's going to go in, and I'm very impressed so far. Yeah. Same here. Wolf, any, uh, any idea there, or are you just going to sit there? <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, I was, uh... Yeah. Thinking about um, your pizza. <laughs> yeah, this guy's gonna be so good. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, so the the fact that you can and I, I you, know, you just guys said this, but to talk cross platform blows my mind. I mean, I, I was I remember when they finally connected you know, the cross platform chat, and I was on Eve, and I was like, you know, I, I wonder if this is gonna work, but I have no idea. So I I joined my corporation from Dust into my EVE Corporation, and um, I pulled myself into a private chat. Stay with me here, because there's only one person here, so it's just me. So <laughs> it's, it's confusing. It's, it's schizophrenia. It's, right, you know, it's not in my head. This is actually happening. Like, it's not medication issues. It's it's legit. <laughs> so so I, I, I pulled my EVE character, or my Dust character, into a private chat with my EVE character, and then I enabled uh, the in-game chat for both. And I was sitting there at a table, and I was I was scratching my mic on my headset, and I could hear it come through my laptop. And <laughs> I felt every brain cell in my head like explode with amazement, like just rearranging what was yeah, uh, there. Like, everything stopped. Everything stopped. Everything stopped. Like we got to rethink a bunch of shit. Like hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, even in a, a practical sense, I've been in court matches with uh, with my corporation where where a player will be like, "All right, hold on, I'm going to bring my Eve character uh, above this district to do an orbital bombardment," and just like the comprehension of somebody dueling two characters at once on two systems, you know, PC and console. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. well, and we've we've been already trying to my corp wise been trying to gear up for this, but yeah, I just, I don't see yeah. two at the same time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the ambition of it is really staggering, yeah. um, because CCP, other than making EVE Online, hasn't done anything. Um, and for a genre as contested as the first-person shooter genre is, for them to have such an ambitious product, and having no experience of making one before, it's just awesome. You know, they've yeah. got the faith in their team and they have the ambition as uh, as a team to go ahead and, and try to put forth this idea and put their heart and soul into it and time and effort. So 
Um, that's just really cool. I think that's that's good for us as gamers. And it's good for developers. You know, that's kind of shining the beacon forward and saying, you know, this is what we can do. You know, just do what you want. I suppose that also is just the only way to go. You're, you know, if companies are like, oh, we're gonna make another modern shooter multiplayer and release it every year. It's like, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, what sets you apart? Yeah. There's, there's just a list that we could go on and on that does. Um, one thing that I do want to talk about because I think mainly the people that are get gonna get something out of the Dust series that I've been doing, breaking down certain aspects of the game or you know the conversations this one included and in future ones as well what people are mainly going to get out of that are like the new players you know they're going to get tips on what they need to do to start off and be successful or things they're going to have to watch out for um so they're not just wasting their time or running around just uh aimlessly you know um and one thing i wanted to address was really like the, the lack of a full-on specific tutorial um I yeah think that's one of the weaknesses in the game so far because people just downloading the beta and getting in on it and not knowing anybody in oh, the game the to have them help horrible. yeah the closed beta <laughs> was even even worse in that aspect there was no training there was really no tutorial and yeah nobody that we knew is playing really so yeah at least now that it's an open beta there are uh wikis and you know mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's good for the you can audience. go to forums for help. Yeah, for, for the people that want to look further into it, that have that drive, that's good for them. But I think like the average Joe player is going to hop into this and be totally overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, you know, if they don't show enough interest to go online and do a search for the wiki or go to the forums or whatever, then they're never going to know. So I think that one thing CCP needs to really, really push forward is the development of a specific tutorial that gets you as you join the game. Yeah, I think in relation to that, uh, which I guess is also worth talking about, something that new players, especially people that aren't knowledgeable of EVE, are going to have a hard time comprehending is the fact that Dust isn't fair from a normal balance standpoint, uh, and that's an intentional design. What do you mean by isn't fair, though? Um, the, with the whole roleplay uh, leveling up skill points and the fact that you can build up a character with armor that has more hit points and has a gun that does more damage and you know, the, the person that puts more time and effort into skilling their characters just right is going to have an advantage over new players or people that just don't you know. well yeah but um, I think that it, it may feel unfair when you're first starting off, but I think uh, it, it's not built to be unfair. I think that, uh, you know, it's it's just rewarding you for putting the time into it, really. But as of now, we don't really have a dividing line between when you join a game, it doesn't yeah. split you based on skill or anything like that. So right now, it may feel a little stacked in that direction, sure. Yeah, it's a little bit more so just because of its current stage of development. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I think once we once we start getting into full-on factional warfare and full connectivity with uh, the Eve side, I think that doing those type of battles and corporations getting contracts and stuff like that, I think that'll slowly minimize just by itself without yeah. really any type of balancing on CCP's part because I think there's not going to be as many um, public people getting into those corporation battles that's going to be more of a private thing so that'll weed out kind of the the randoms you know indeed mm -hmm. um another thing that i want to talk about that people aren't going to be used to coming from any other shooter such as battlefield call of duty um is kind of like the real world economy model i think that's mm -hmm. that's a huge deal that people are going to have to wrap their minds around uh, about going into the marketplace and you've got to buy every piece of equipment. Um, they have starter gears that you can start off with, starter like militia drop suits and uh, militia weapons and stuff. But um, as far as when you fully customize and you start getting skill points into certain things and you're buying those, each suit or each weapon, every item that you own you have to buy them in quantity because when you get into a battle, if you die, you lose that set of items. So it has a real-world economy, basically. 
because uh, everything costs you money and you make that investment into those things and then when you die you lose them so you're losing money each time you die and that also goes back into the balance thing of the you know the better gear costs significantly more so mm -hmm. and it can be satisfying when you're running with you know free gear or mid-level gear and you take out the person that's wearing prototype equipment and uh mm -hmm. you know you just well, yeah, and, a lot and, of their profit or yeah exactly i mean and the fact of it is is that everybody will die your stuff yeah. will get destroyed so it's, it's that's a huge point and that was a discussion i had with somebody the other day was as i was explaining the game to him i said you know you can get a guy that'll pay you know, a hundred thousand or a couple hundred thousand, maybe even a million isk, and he'll get you know a tank or he'll he'll upgrade something or put so much money into a build of whatever it is, and then you know he may be dominating for most of that game. But if you're in the last couple minutes of the game or whatever, and you manage to destroy that, you get such a deep satisfaction from that yeah. because that's his investment that you destroy, and that's your payback. It's not just killing a guy and having him respawn in five seconds. It's you're taking the money out of this asshole's pocket that's been wrecking you all game. <laughs> you know, that's an awesome feeling. Yeah, it's definitely not like Battlefield uh, 3 where if, you know, you lose your tank, it's just, well, I'll wait for another one to spawn and I'll just mm -hmm. jump into that. It's, uh, you actually have to pay for them, so. Yeah, and, and that, that makes it so the system itself requires everything to matter. Yeah. Everything has to be paid for. That's really awesome. And that's exciting, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one thing that I was talking about with uh, with Wolf, and this was actually earlier today, was the full-on, like, full-scale warfare. Um, you mean the our super-secret clan meeting with all two members? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the confidential meeting that I'm about to oh, talk okay, about. Oh, okay, good. Let's just go ahead yeah. and throw that out there. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, uh, and this wasn't one of the, the things that was secret, but like uh, the scenario that I put forth was say that um, Corporation X has control of planets 1, 2, and 3 in any given system, and Corporation Y wants to take a chunk out of their market, so they put a contract on planet 1. Uh, us at, as dust mercenaries, we accept the contract and say, okay, well, we'll fight on planet 1 for you. So we take it over, and, and now that system is being contested. There's now battle going on in space on the east side, so they can yep. get close to the planet to drop the troops and support us on the ground. And then there's battles being fought on the PlayStation 3 on, on the planet as well, so we can control the different territories on the planet and get full planetary control for that corp. Um, and what's cool is that you can see, even without seeing it in-game there, you know that these things are happening. So it's as full scale as it could possibly be. Because if the Eve players get pushed back in that battle from Corporation X, if they don't have enough ships to support that attack on the system, they're gonna get pushed back. And then us as Dust players are gonna get left on the ground until we die without support. You know, so it's gotta be a full mil military action, full scale warfare just to get us into a system like that and that's that's just mind-blowing to me yeah well i was i was actually thinking of that um correction i was actually reflecting <clears throat> on that previous conversation mm -hmm. and um i'm i'm wondering because everything up until right now today is 100 percent speculation mm -hmm. because we know nothing about dust and you know part of me is like you know what? i bet you ccp doesn't even know what the hell they're gonna do with that <laughs> yeah they're just like wake up one day and hey you know what let's put a tank in there you know? <laughs> so they, they just they go with it but i'm wondering obviously it's going to be on the eve side it's going to be a fight in and your your low sec and your null sec areas where you're where you're fighting over sovereignty sovereignty you're going to get uh, a huge, epic proportion space battle, and it's gonna be awesome looking. And but but I'm wondering if how how we get to point A to point B. I'm wondering if cause they're not gonna make a transport ship that you have to yeah. that an E player has to fly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I'm wondering. Or if they how, do, it won't be for a long time. No cannon targeting hostile 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, which thing in some dev notes for Eve, and I, I actually I just patched Eve, that's why I wasn't talking too much. <laughs> but uh, I just <laughs> patched it and, and threw some training in there real quick. Oh, good. Okay. I was like, what oh, are nice talking about? I gotta where, do this. I forgot where about your attention that. lies, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it was related. It was shiny. Um, and I looked, but, um... Yeah. They're, they're getting rid of the <laughs> destroyer class, and I don't know if they're replacing it, or what, because, I mean, everything, I mean, as you know, uh, Moon, everything in EVE takes space. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't have enough these to carry as much as you want, you're screwed. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to bring X amount of tanks, X amount of guns. I'm wondering how all this is going to get from one place to another. Yeah, because cur currently in Dust, uh, the, the pre pre match lobby is a, a, a war bar, Giant which is just like. How did it get there? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually exist here, as far as I know. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> it was theoretically, at some point in development, that's going to be game space where. Yeah. Uh, It'll be like NPC only, and then eventually become piece of, like player-owned ships that, that actually transport right. you know, players. Yeah, so, so I'm wondering how that is going to because I mean, if they do it on the Eve side, we wind up being the orca of ground combat for Eve, and nobody wants to be that guy. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Because everything's supposed to, you know, everything is, is consumable and, and everything's supposed to be replaceable, and so you lose a tank and you call on another tank where that tank comes from the barge that's in orbit. How did it get to the orbit? So, and can, and can said barge be destroyed? Yeah. You know, that's, that's one of the things I'm wondering is what if, you know, you're in your EVE group and you're going from point A to point B and everyone's like, alright, we're just chilling in our war barge and we're in our fleet and all of a sudden we're sitting at a gate and we get blown up. <laughs> what happens to everything? <laughs> well, probably, you know, yeah. a trap, you know, and everything just kind of happens and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, get, that's get definitely up. part of the, uh, the frustrating part of... Uh, I mean, any sort of game where you start playing it where it's still in development. Oh yeah. yeah. So and, and so it, it can go anywhere. You know? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying yes, it should or no, it shouldn't or they shouldn't have because they haven't. But um, it's 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 definitely going to be interesting. Yeah. Um. But this, I, I I definitely see. Um, I was going to say this earlier, but I, I'm prone to interrupting and being an asshole. But and I was <laughs> preoccupied. But uh, I definitely see dust going in the direction that Mag did. And by that, I, I don't mean breaking and slowly <laughs> um, becoming more and more horrible. Uh, I see it as um, almost like a... I don't want to call it fanboy, but I don't want to call it a pro game. But it's going to be people that only like Dust is only going to play Dust. Like, when Mag came out, people were like, holy shit, Mag is awesome. Nobody played anything else. Yeah. It was always Mag. It was Mag. I played Mag for like 28 hours once. You know, I, I, I definitely yeah. have to. It was horrible. It was I um, mean, it is it is gonna be a you know an all-consuming game for some people that are just like this is all I play for you know a right. year or whatever or maybe because, longer. Right, because the the learning curve for one, but you were you were talking about matches and with lower skilled players when you get into that high-end faction warfare. Yeah, and you get into that that corporation versus corporation. However, you get to the planet, which is what we're just talking about. You're not going to have those brand new guys. You know, these corporations like are going are, with, with their recruitment. If they're going to have new people. They're probably not going to incorporate them into a into a oh, well, battle. That's actually not necessarily true. Um, I mean, the corp corp I'm in right now, subreddit. We have over 700 members, and. They're part of Test Alliance, which holds a huge chunk I'm, of yes, I'm, I'm well, aware, yeah. well aware of Test Alliance. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, you know, thinking long term, there's you know, if you actually want to control Molsec, uh planets, once that actually becomes a thing, yes. you're going to need a lot of troops, and that means 
Yeah. You know, I'm talking about the random, like the level two that you see in Battlefield. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see that. Your 700 guys are going to continue to advance. There's oh, no yeah. way to to not progress. Yeah. You know, so, but once you start, once, you know, especially with with, <laughs> with the two guys are part of test, um, you're going to be fairly busy. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, especially with uh, Goon Swarm, so uh, yeah, the fact that it, you're only going to grow, but I don't see you guys taking on new people. I mean, of course you're going to be, you know, new player friendly, but I, I don't see yeah, like if they only allow 60 people on each team. You know, yeah. like the like the 120 matches that Mag had. Are you going to bring 40? experienced guys and then 20 you know rookies to get some experience or yeah yeah you're gonna bring you're gonna bring 60 your a game you know Uh, because that's what they're gonna do so i i and of course there's gonna be new player expansion and development i guess what i was getting at was that you're not going to see you're gonna see a different caliber when you get into that section of the game I, I think that's different. also part of why I, I'm kind of pushing the game right now to a lot of people that aren't mm-hmm. necessarily fans is because there's a, a definite benefit to creating a character now with a passive skill system of like, mm-hmm. even if you don't yeah. like it, uh, as the game development develops and becomes hopefully a much better game, uh, you know, six months down the line, you're going to have enough SP to, to put together a, a decent character and yeah, you know, definitely. Just jump uh, right into and, it. And what I keep having to explain to people is that someone who has hopped in and tried it and said, oh, not for me, I don't like it at all. Yeah. Um, any any one of the things that they don't like, you know, I can address that. Like, okay, yeah. there's plans for that, or this is going to be improved, or, you know, like everything is being worked on. This is by no means a final product in any area of the game. Um, so, you know, for, for the naysayers that say, oh, well, it looks like garbage you know it looks like dumpster juice um graphical improvements are incoming yeah. i just saw a live stream today and a developer from ccp was talking and saying graphical updates are on the way for sure absolutely so the game is gonna look better it's gonna be improved it's gonna play smoother yeah we're supposed to be getting uh, grass and trees i believe oh Uh-oh. really look out yeah. ah, okay. exciting <laughs> yeah. Ooh, trees yeah um <laughs> And then, you know, uh, it's going to be smoother. I'm pretty sure that they want to increase the player count. So for people to say the maps are too big and there's not enough players, that's yeah. addressing that. I was going to say, um, this, this four-man squad shit's got to go. <laughs> yeah, I, be- I, I mean, believe the last I heard was they have plans for six-man squads and 48-player uh, matches with up to 24 <sighs> vehicles on the map at once. Oh, beautiful. Uh, nice. That'll be nice. Because I will take, I will take less graphics. A, my TV is horrible, so graphics <laughs> update, not gonna matter. But I will take, I'll take a hit in graphics to have more people. You know, mag. Let's yeah, be real. Mag. Graphics, atrocious, absolutely horrible. But you could fit a hundred people. It was just insane, awesome craziness. You know, so I'll, you know, I'll take that hit. Of course, a lot of people. Will, I'm going to shut up. Which <laughs> well, and, and that was one of the discussion points I had. I was talking to a uh, fellow Redditor, Brian Boru, and, you know, I explained to him, you have to go into dust with an open mindset because, you know, when I, when I play games, and especially first-person shooters or action games or whatever, you know, there's usually three qualifiers that I'm looking for to judge the game. I want one of them is usually graphics, You know, I would like my game to look good. That's a pretty good qualifier to judge on whether I enjoy a game. Uh, If it can't look good, if it's running on an old engine or the developer isn't, you know, a AAA title developer, um, and the game's not going to look great, give me great gameplay. I definitely want that in a game, and especially in a shooter. It's got to be smooth. uh, It's got to be user-friendly as well as the interface, you know, and it's got to have good gameplay. That's the backbone of it. It could look great, but it could play like shit, you know, or vice versa. It could play great and look like shit. That's Call of Duty. Um, 
So there's different markets that each one of those things appeals to, and then if if you can't do either one of those right, then give me a great story. Because if I care about the characters, if I care what's going on, then I'll probably stick through shoddy gameplay and yeah. graphics. You know? And Colonial Marines had none of that. None of them, yeah. So there's examples in every category. If you want great graphics and bad gameplay and bad story, that's Crisis. If you want bad graphics and great gameplay, that's uh, Call of Duty. If you want none of those things, if you want to play a bad game, play Colonial Marines. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I highly advise uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of uh, Dustin's storyline, I mean, it doesn't have, like, a story, but just the uh, the amount of details to the universe because it's tied to the EVE universe and the amount of thought CC put, he put into the game mechanics tying into that is really nice as far as oh, yeah. uh, you know, the whole the whole idea of us being clones that just, you know, we die and we come back with our consciousness just being put into the, the storyline is great. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and then like I said, there's three qualifiers. That does a whole other thing. That brings in a fourth. That allows us to create our own story. Yeah. And, and so far as making a corporation, uh, having leadership, and taking over certain roles, um, you know, and forming alliances and, you know, what type of corporation you want to be, what type of a leader do you want to be. And those are all things that is just, it's all immersive. You know, each one of those things brings you further and further into the game. You know, it makes you invest more time into it. And you, you end up caring about it. Like I said, everything matters in that type of an economy. And the whole point of the spiel about the different qualifiers that I was looking for is that you've got to go in with an open mind because if you're going in looking for only one of those things then you're not going to be satisfied if you walk into dust saying you know it's 2013 i expect top quality i want this to make my eyes bleed when i look at it because it's so real you're not going to get that you got to have an open mind <laughs> that's, that's, I, that's awesome. awesome. I can't eat <laughs> indiana jones yeah, I guess this is something I'd, uh, I'd like to point. Uh, ask Seawolf here since you're an uh, active oh, Eve God. player. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> for, for for new Dust players that aren't really into Eve, mm -hmm. uh, just giving them an idea of like how much meta gaming and you know like court politics between corporations, uh, how that'll influence gameplay in the future. You know, it's funny, we were actually talking about this uh, glass mm -hmm. earlier. Um, <clears throat> I mean, do you just want me to talk for the rest of the hour? Or, <laughs> I'll tell you to the, shut that's, up. That's the go synopsis. Go that, I mean, that's, that's the cliff notes. It's about 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess give an example of a situation that, that you know Dust players might not expect to be in their future. Um... No, you're making him think now. That's, There's that's so a many. That, <laughs> this is going so horrible. That I do this. Uh, <laughs> it's so open ended because, like we were taught earlier, with the the, the battle barge or whatever. Um, if it's just kind of chilling, you know, going gate to gate, gate probably gonna be slow as hell. Um, when you get in Dulcek, are you finally? achieve that target system that you're trying to gain control of um, you have to warp from the to that planet and so and there are weapons in Eve that can take you out of mid warp um, so the barge is going through and say so you've got a quote unquote spy you know test the, the goon swarms going after test again and um, they've got a spy in them, and the battle barge goes to jump, and it gets warp scram or warp jam, either one. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you get the whole Ak Admiral Akbar back, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> every example of getting backstabbed. Um, another example is these tracks are going to be random, or they they have the opportunity to be random, you know, ja or uh, <clears throat> Gladys the Baker corporation, you know, so the Baker Corp, 
<laughs> the baker's uh, dozen. Could be like, uh, yeah, the baker's dozen. Uh, could put out a, a contract for Planet Bob. And so you're like, well, you know what? That's cool. We'll go. Uh, we'll go over there and we'll corp. And uh, you know, so Gladys says, look, I've got the uh, ten ships ready to rock for orbital support. You know, you just call it in, and we'll make it rain. And so they get down there, and they're getting their ass hammered to them, and they're like, look, let's call in some support. Hey, Gladys, you know, let's have some bombs. Make it rain fire from the heavens. And he's not there. <laughs> you know? So the whole time you're like, uh, you know, hey, dude. <laughs> like, wake up, yeah. man. And he's not there. And next thing you know, now you're out contract. Because I'm sure, as contracts worked in EVE, or as they work in EVE, you're going to have to put down collateral. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would assume. Uh, so you're out your collateral. You didn't get paid. And now, since you got your ass waxed, uh, you're out all this for every vehicle, every gun, every grenade, every drop suit. You know. It... Yeah, because everything is controlled by the players, there's there's Absolutely. so many situations that are just you know the unexpected can happen. Yeah, or uh, or um, say it stipulates in the contract, Gladys will provide ten heavy tanks, and you're like, awesome! I won't bring tanks. He's gonna give me some, and you get there, and guess what? There's no tanks. There's just a giant middle finger that comes out of orbit <laughs> and <laughs> lands in your zone, and you're just like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this is what I'm getting to fight with. So, <laughs> there's just... If you could think... If you could sit down and be like, I wonder if they could do that. Damn it, they can do it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you can think it, they've already thought of another way to make that better. To screw yeah. you over. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just with anything. Um, I'm surprised you can't do, like, a friendly fire orbital bombardment. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was really surprising me. The the decision that when an orbital bombardment comes down, there's no friendly damage. Right. Yeah. Which that could be patched later on, but I could yeah. just see someone being like, "Dude, I'm, I'm totally you know help you run the squad," and then you know running as a squad leader and then turn around and be like, oh, "I'm gonna drop some bombs behind me." <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oops, sorry. I'm new. I'm new. I didn't know what to do. I'm totally working mm -hmm. for these guys though, and I was told to drop some bombs <laughs> on you, which I yeah. did. So, so I, I pushed the button too early and uh, just hit your tank instead. Yeah, yeah. I'm You've sorry. Never I blew up four of your tanks and sixteen of your squad mates. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. This defense is falling apart though. Now they're running through the gates. I'm so sorry. Three million um, isk down the drain in one. Yes. By the way, that'll be yeah, four million isk. <laughs> Because it was your own guns that did it, so now your E Corp that's back and use out of money. <laughs> yeah, you, you paid for that friendly bombardment on all yep. your equipment. Yep, you did. It more yeah, so that's than one. That's a, something exciting to look forward to. Is oh, yeah. exciting? Hell, it's gonna suck. <laughs> What the hell's wrong with you? I don't want that happening to me. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess like, since it's been a long time since I've played EVE, I've gotten a lot more enjoyment just reading people's articles about, you know, oh, the crazy stories that happen in the game. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess getting back to Dust uh, proper as it is right now, I think something that a lot of people are, could be interested in or already into is a... Uh, court battles and just a, a really easy way to, to just do matches against other corporations uh, just to have that in-game mechanic is really nice yeah I definitely see it being like a like well, that last effort that mag had the whole clan battle thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Like, uh, like yeah battlefield 3 uh, you know a lot of reddit corps will you know, set up battles against each other. Yeah. Um, yep. But it's it's all set up outside a game where, it, where we've, it's, we've it's nice to have something in game that that handles all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, that'd be that'd be wonderful if we had an in game like uh, almost like a bulletin board. You know, where we could say, "Hey, ATC, looking for an eight v eight. You know, uh, yeah. rush yeah. challenge. You know, something like that." Yeah, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, looking for somebody to have feet. that. <laughs> Looking to bend you over? <laughs> Apply with him. <laughs> like taking it from behind? Apply. <laughs> <laughs>
leave your contact info. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. Um, Wolf, did you have any particular subjects that you wanted to talk about that we haven't covered so far? Um, not particularly. I mean, it's it's so open ended. Like I keep saying, there's there's mm -hmm. so many different subjects. Okay. Uh, here all night, new stuff. So I think we've pretty covered covered the most part of it. So. Okay. Moon, was there anything else that we haven't covered that you wanted to go over? Um, if you wanted to get into the suit versatility, maybe, uh, I don't know if you guys have messed around with different suit combinations and little combinations that, that are interesting, that stand out as, uh, something most people might not think of doing. Well, as far as things that most people wouldn't think of doing, I haven't gone in that direction, but I've already identified, you know, what's, what's going to be my main role on the battlefield. Yep. Um, I know generally what I see out there right now, so I could, you know, we could talk about what is the norm yeah. for the new players when they go out there, what they're probably going to be experiencing, maybe some things they'll run into. Um, as far as that goes, if you're playing Ambush, which is basically Team Deathmatch, you will see heavies everywhere. Um, in fact, yep. I've already you do seen. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I've I've already seen a meme to that effect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about heavies being everywhere in ambush game mode. So uh, I normally don't advise people to try ambush when they first start out. I definitely try to herd them towards the skirmish mode, especially because a lot of the people that I talk to are Battlefield Three players, and the skirmish okay, yeah. mode is essentially so they're conquest. already used to it. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Exactly. They already know how it plays, what to do. It's just a matter of you know figuring out how conquest from battlefield translate into skirmish in dust. Um, but normally, I would say there's there's a handful of snipers that you'll have to deal with each map. Uh, you'll probably run into maybe three or four heavies, and then the rest of the people will be running some variation of the assault drop suit, um, which is basically just well balanced. It's all around. They've got decent health and shield, and they can move yeah. at a decent pace. Yeah. yeah, but uh, in fighting on the objectives, I mean, you're going to see a lot of people running heavies in there. And that's myself included. Um, it's just it's perfectly suited to base defense or attacking. So I'll yeah. use a scout drop suit to get up to the objectives on the initial part, the, the beginning of the game. And then once we finally take something that I'm able to spawn on, or if somebody drops a spawn beacon, then I'll come back in as a heavy or I'll switch it out at a supply depot. And that'll be, you know, my defense or attacking procedures. Yeah, switch to a heavy and just unleash hell. Yeah, it's nice watching uh, watching how the game, game mechanics have developed and how, how the players kind of slowly learn to adjust to them. Like the... Uh, there's a pretty high dynamic of if you've got a heavy with the logistics behind them or the repair tools, that's yeah. a pretty devastating combination. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's only re recently as a logistics that I've seen people actually attacking me before attacking the heavy. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's how you do it, is you've got to take out the person repairing them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it's it's definitely going to... Dust is going to be our, our armor. Uh, I, I definitely see that coming in, and maybe the, uh, a later chat, <clears throat> uh, just strictly from that that kind of mechanics, like tactics-wise, and how they yeah. can incorporate the PI and, and nullsec. But uh, the game mechanics is nowhere to go but up. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's beta and it's it's still choppy. <laughs> so I mean even if it was bad, they still got nowhere to go but up. But it, it's it's not going to be the only problem I foresee. And, and this takes me back to my, my mag comment with the, the more dedicated gamer is, uh, and of course, uh, Moon, you're, I'm fairly certain you're going to agree, is that I think bidding is going to be a huge uh, turnoff. Because I'm pretty sure I'm still really low on the donor list for livers from all the Advil I've had to take for the headaches <laughs> I've had from, from Ting. Um, <laughs> And I guess any advice I can give is just stick with it. It's easy. Fitting is very, very yeah, easy. Once it is, you get the it training does take up, like, and you get the money, and you know what you're looking for, it takes four seconds. Yeah. But those first couple months uh, in EVE, you know, I hope it won't take that long for you in Dust, but it's... Yeah, I think it took me about a week in <clears throat> Dust to, to really right. get a, a handle of uh, 
all of the different skills and, and right. how to set up a suit well. Yeah, and uh, a friend of Gladys is in mine um, from a, a EKK and uh, Battlefield. I was telling him about the orbital bombardments and you get to do this and that. <laughs> and he was like, oh my god, it's going to be so awesome. And I was like, well, hang on a second. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Now you have to worry about power grid, CPU, weight, what you can and can't handle from your training, and you have to have so many skill points to buy or to upgrade yeah. this, but you have to have the money first to buy the book. And he was like, yeah, you let me know how that goes and I'll, uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> totally. He, was, he went, he was yin and yang, man. He was like, yep, let's do it right now. Why am I not playing it immediately while we're talking about it, too? Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. But the, the reward for the people that, that do put that effort in is pretty amazing. I mean, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, to compare it to, to Battlefield 3, uh, anybody that's played that game and played Assault and Support have probably thought, like, how amazing it would it be if I could carry a, a an ammo crate and a you know med kit around and deploy the both at any time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and well, you know, you dust, you can totally do that. Yeah. yeah. You, you can, can also be that carry a simulator as well. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could be everything in all in all in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, you could do you could do the complete opposite. You could be that heavy that has the the giant you know minigun. Yeah. And. Just nothing, have, yeah, like, a, like, you know, like from, uh... No, I'm just laughing at the play on words, the giant oh, minigun. I didn't even realize that. Oh, God, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> a, uh, large, rapid-firing weapon. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just be pure kill. Right, and but it, you have nothing but uh, shield boosters and our uh, armor reps and oh, yeah. shield boosters and yeah. shield recharges, and, and but you don't carry anything else. So you be that quote unquote walking tank because everybody behind you is throwing yeah. ammo, giving you reps, helping you, you know, all that other stuff. So you yeah, you're totally support. amazing, but you're also totally reliant on the rest of your team. To keep right, you, alive. you know, you got like six guys following you to keep you maintained and, and operating, yeah. but you're that indestructible force, so you could go either way. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's versatility, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I've what? actually been. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I've been enjoying recently um, the scout suit, which a lot of people don't go to because it's the lightweight yeah. recon suit mm-hmm. that most people think is snipers, sniper only. But uh, it has a, an amazing scan uh, native skill, and I've boosted up that with the, uh, the passively with skill system. And now I'm pretty much like a walking tugs. I have like, <laughs> I just know where everyone is around me, and uh, it's amazing just playing that way. Yeah, that sounds nice. Um, oh, I yeah. actually wasn't even aware there was something like that. So, yep. you know, that's that's another example yeah, there, of myself. Yeah, you really <laughs> dig into a the pretty well-educated dust player, and I had no idea what you were just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing, man. It's the same with Eve. Once you think you, uh, you're like, yeah, no, I, I know what's going on. Yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Murphy's Law sums it up pretty well. I mean, if, if oh, everything yeah. seems to be going well, then you obviously <laughs> overlook something. Yep. yep. <laughs> but um, yeah. kind of getting yeah, back to the drop suit fitting, you know, the, the one thing and how you said, you know, you could go and be the walking tank and, and be that heavy and be that guy. But you're still dependent on the other people for repairing and for giving you ammo and all that stuff and being your support. Or, you know, make even to the point of, like, counter sniping. So, yeah, you're a tank and you can't be killed by regular infantry, but you also walk at about the speed of smell, you know? So right. that sniper is going to be able to headshot you without, you know, missing a beat. Um, so you're going to need people to either fight him or repair you as you're taking shots or whatever, you know? But anyways, my point is, like... You're not going to have one person on the battlefield that's going to wreck everybody. There's no way. Because there's so many different specializations you can go to. There's nothing that is good against everything. Mm-hmm. So, everything's got a counter, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and bringing back uh, the heavy once again and going back to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep doing this. But going back to the squad sizes and, and communication and whatnot, that heavy... So that heavy is coming down the street, you know, and he's just wrecking everything, you know, and it just turns the whole gameplay around. And this is what I mean by it's going to be our arma, you know, it's going to be our mag, 
because everybody's gonna have to have money, you know, and it's gonna oh, be yeah. holy shit, there comes that dude, everybody disperse, and then it's gonna have to be this coordinated attack, hit the guys from behind, and squad three is gonna have to hit him, and you run across the street, you know, without your pants on and distract him, <laughs> you know, and make sure he's looking at you while we shoot somebody else. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be crazy, man. It's, it's the tactics are gonna totally change, because. Uh, there's only a couple maps in Battlefield where you can use the helicopters and actually come in behind somebody and drop them off, you know, and mm -hmm. and, and work that way. This is going to be totally different. Um, yeah, it's going to be huge. I think the the potential is pretty much limitless. Especially of course, last time, last time I talked about potential, uh, it was Colonial Marines. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know how that went. Um, yeah. I even changed See, the background on my phone. Like, oh, really? God, I was so happy for that game. Oh, <laughs> that hurts, man. Yeah. Um, I totally forgot where I was gonna go because now I'm just laughing at that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that feels great. Shit. <laughs> uh, I guess it might be worth talking about the the free to play design and uh, yep. How, oh, I sure. mean, that's something people that aren't really into dust might be hesitant of, just because. Free to gate play games kind of suck for the most part. Um, yeah. Well, because and I think the main reason is because they don't seem like the same quality titles that we get out of those AAA games, you know. Um, yeah. Also, I think one of the huge misconceptions about this game specifically and about free to play models in general is that it doesn't mean because it's free to free to play and it has microtransactions, it doesn't mean that it's pay to win. Um, yeah. In essence, basically, what I mean is free-to-play games always have the option for microtransactions. You can spend real money and buy things in-game and get better equipment, sure. Uh, but how it's going to work in this game is not the case. And that's why I mean it's one of the major misconceptions about Dust is that people say, okay, well, yeah, it's free-to-play, I can get in, but if I want the really good stuff, i got to pay for it. And that's absolutely not true. Not true at all. Um to unlock a lot of the stuff that you have to pay for with the in-game currency called Aurum, um, that's the stuff that you say, if I put $10 into the game, I'll get 10,000 Aurum, just for an example, hypothetically. Um, now, I can buy different equipment that is exclusive to Aurum, but it's not top-of-the-line gear. I would equate yeah. it almost to, like, militia line gear, like level one stuff. It's uh, just... It's, it's it's higher than that. I mean, it's, we're, you're looking at like metal, meta four, meta five ish, but there's definitely higher. Because I, I actually bought a, a Lodgy suit with some arm that I got from getting in the data. Um, about to cut you off. Oh, the, the BPO uh, Sever suit? <coughs> Sever Lodgy? Uh, no, it wasn't the Sever one. It was a just I think the. Was it the Sever? No, it was, the, oh, okay. uh, it was the Neo, and uh, I was looking um, at it because I didn't have, I had the money, but I didn't have the training, which is, you know, it's, yeah, that's, it's always that's one the, thing uh, or the other. Consumable I, or I hate two. that. Right. But uh, I was looking at some of the other legit suits, and I was like, wow, these things are crazy, man. But yeah. I had to have something because I got tired yeah. of using the default. The assault suit they just gave you. Yeah. Um, well,. Well, the example, though, I mean, is like, okay, sure, you can buy that one with, with Aram, but my, my point that I'm trying to get across is that it's just a different direction. It's yeah, not necessarily yeah. no, leveling upwards and upgrading when you're buying stuff with Aram. You're just buying it's something better, that's it's different. It's better than most, but it's not the best. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, and how you're going to get uh, to the best is just upgrading skills. Arm is not going to get you those skills. That's just going to buy you some equipment. But you have to have yeah. the skills necessary, the prerequisites, to actually even Absolutely. use it. So that's why... Because if you notice, there is a single skill you can pay for with Arm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so I, think they, is... I think their freedom uh, mechanic is actually yeah, much better than any other game I've seen so far. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, as you were saying, the the Aurum items, you know, you can get better equipment, but it's only like one level better with any sort of given skill. So right. you can just it's basically a convenience thing if you're just impatient, then you have to you know, all you have to do is wait like a week to level up to the next thing and then you can just buy the the in-game currency one without paying real money. 
Yeah, and and how it translates into actual examples is like if you're on the battlefield, you're not going to be getting killed by people all over the place using arm, and you as like the poor man gamer, you know, man. you're not going to be pulling your hair out saying, "Oh, you know, I wish I could get this weapon, but it's only something that I can pay real money for." You're not right. going to run into that type of situation, no. like ever. It's not going to happen. And you can buy whatever you want. I mean, you could have a, a, a hundred billion aura. I mean, you could buy every single aura object in the game. You're not. It's not the best. <clears throat> and if you don't have the training for it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. You know. And in order to get the training, you know, like in Eve, in order to get the training, you had to have the money, and you had to have the time. <clears throat> um, but mainly, obviously, you had to have the money. Mm -hmm. In in Dust. Obviously, you have to have the money, but you have to have the skill points. So, yep. if you want, if you want heavy assault, super, I never die, badass drop <laughs> suit with big minigun, you know, you can buy it if you got the money. But you have, you have to play their game to get the yep. skill points yeah. in order to use it. To get and the other nice thing is that because it is a first-person shooter, player skill puts is is so important. You can yep. just now you'll see people with starter gear, uh, you know, running, playing the map, and just up. owning the map. Yeah, <laughs> tearing it up. And people get really, really upset. It's like, oh, the the, the militia shotgun is so overpowered. It's like, no, it's not. That's no, just a he's good got player. shotgun five, and he has no recoil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and I think uh, uh, also one thing that we should talk about even if only briefly is uh, with the economy how we just referenced arm and skill points and we've talked about is yeah. before there's there's three currencies that you're going to run into while you're playing dust uh isk is your dust money that's basically the, the currency in game is isk um you've got skill points which you're going to get in the thousands uh each match that you play maybe even possibly the tens of thousands um, depending on length of time and how well you do and your contribution yeah. to the battle, but um, skill points are on like an exponential basis. Like you can get level one skill point on any given thing for maybe somewhere between six and ten thousand skill points, and that's really nothing because that's you're talking one maybe two matches. Uh, but then the level two for that skill is going to be seventy thousand. After that, it's going to be a hundred and ninety thousand. You know, so now if you want to go further, this is the time involved that it's going to take. You're going to have to play 10, 20, 30 matches just to level up that one skill to level three. You know, um, so skill points are, I would say, your most important type of currency is that you're going to have to have as many skill points as you can possibly get. Um, and then, of course, arm, like I said earlier, was real money. That people put into the game and it converts into arm and that's a special currency that can be used to buy certain exclusive items yeah which and i just realized that's kind of a double-edged sword in a in a good way um because if you see something if you don't have any arm and you see something that you want or you're like man if i can i can use that but i can't I don't have any more isk to buy anything better or better than what i've got but that arm is i'm i'm sure that if you paid CCP ten dollars and they gave you ten thousand orum and you bought whatever orum on an item you wanted. That's how they're gonna keep the game going. Yeah. That ten dollars you just gave is not gonna go because if there's anything that CCP does is they actually do at least on the Eve side and by the uh, the link that we had earlier that we were talking about before we started recording, they do answer their questions, do listen to their fan base. Mm -hmm. But they don't have anything else to do. They've got a game and a half. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> so they're they're gonna listen and they're going to take that money and not go and buy lunch with it. They're gonna put it into dust. Yep. Yeah. You know to yeah. to try and make so everyone's like, well, you're paying to win. Well, I'm I'm paying for all of us to win. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm broke as shit in a game. So. <laughs> <laughs> another another thing to consider with the uh, the economy and and the Orum uh, is. It's not implemented right now, but this is part of the future plans is uh, an in-game economy uh, that theoretically will be able to sell Orum items for ISK 
or buy buy you know real money items with a uh, you know in-game currency. Well, they're gonna have yeah. to. Um, yeah. Because I made the mistake earlier today. I I had a bunch of isk, but I didn't have any skill points. So, what do you do in Eve when you have uh, money but no time? You know, you go through the market and you buy every book that you can. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> and so I'm going through, and I couldn't remember exactly what I had uh, to begin with. I'm going through, I'm like, well, that's going to be useful. I'm going to need that. Yeah, I'm going to need that. So I'm buying. And but you, for the skill book side, obviously for the consumable items, you know, they're going to give you a range between zero, you know one gun and a million yes. guns, because you know you're going to have to choose how many you want. But <clears throat> they did that with the skill books too. Yeah, because I wound up buying or having that skill book already and I bought another one so now I essentially have two but you don't you can't train the same thing twice you're gonna have to sell it eventually yeah right uh, which makes me think that as in Eve um, they're gonna make a set amount of books the, the, the CCP is and they're just, just gonna let them circulate and the other nice you know so hey I have yeah. Uh, what am I going to do with that other book? I got to sell it. I got to give it to somebody. And the other nice thing about too is the people that have money to blow on the game can buy uh, like Orum booster packs, which speed up your skill point gain. Yeah. And then sell them on the market because they they're like, I don't care. I can spend this money, and then they can make in-game currency and have yep, just like plays. gobbles of isk to blow yep. for whatever. That's like Plex. There's people that play Eve for free. That's all yeah. they do is they just make billions and billions of ISK in Eve and they buy Plex because somebody paid CCP $15 for a 30-day flight license and they sold it for in-game currency. They're going to have to. And the other thing that makes me think is, I know it's been a while since you played, but I don't know if they had the corporation hangers. Uh, uh, yeah, they when did. You, the, I'm okay. pretty sure they did. I've only been playing for eight months, so I don't really know <clears throat> too much. But the fact that now I have two assault rifle books makes me think that I take that other assault rifle book and put it in a corporation hangar and dust. So when we do get that new guy, he's like, hey, I've been playing this for 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, he can be like, well, hey, welcome aboard. Here's the book. <laughs> Read it. Read to your little, whatever. Do, little hearts Read content. how to use your gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it just makes me think you're just kind of So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, know, um. Nobody does. I don't think it's me. Well, we're going to find out hopefully uh, yep. sooner than later. Um, yeah, that's with no official release date yet for Dust. Um, we know it's going to be this year, but we have no idea on the time frame of when. Probably um, PlayStation 4. Well, and, and one of the things that they talked about was with uh, Gaikai and being able to, to stream other games from other consoles, or like past consoles. Um, I think that it would be easy for them to stream Dust onto the PlayStation 4. And as it's it's going to be an ongoing development, similarly to the support structure that we've seen for EVE, EVE is always growing, it's always being changing, uh, it's constantly evolving. That's the same type of support that we're going to see with Dust for years yeah. to come, is we're going to see continued support, continued changes, and listening to community feedback, and we're all going to be making this game together. The hell, we had a night map the other day, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brand new. We, we were like, why is it so dark? <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I mean, the more people that we get on, the more people that talk about it and give feedback, the better the game's going to be. Like, it's it's not just the developers making the game. We have a voice, and they're listening. So we're yeah. making this game as well. Yeah, that's another you know, exciting part of the game that a lot of people are going to have a hard time wrapping their head around is, uh, as you said, it's like, based on what EVE is, you know, so the game thus might be finished, quote unquote, by, you know, it's maybe this summer, who they plan to support it for something like crazy, like 10 years at least. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Dust and, uh, is never going to leave beta. It yeah. might, they might take beta work in progress off the screen, but it's never going to leave. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but it's like, 
Yeah, you consider that that's like that's like the theoretical lifespan of the PlayStation 3 here. You know, yeah. like uh, most people don't think of games in that current lifespan. Mm-hmm. And I don't. When I say never leave beta, I mean it in, in the best way possible. It's yeah. never yeah. going to be worked on. Um, and if anybody knows anything about CC. It's that <clears throat> their attention to de-easter time is phenomenal. It's it's unfathomable. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not worried about the detail side. Yeah. Well, the, really the only not. way that the doors are going to be closed on dust on console is when CCP decides to close the servers. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's going to be around as long as PlayStation is around and as long as there's people playing. Yep. Yeah. And and to testify to the whole, uh, if you know, you're like, oh, see, well, if I don't believe you, because you're an idiot, you know, <laughs> to back that up, uh, going back on the Eve with the patch, their attention to detail is so finite that they're actually removing skills from Eve because they were like, uh, we're actually too in depth with this. <laughs> we're gonna have to take some going back to you know taking away destroyer classes and stuff. They they. Uh, they're removing some skills and removing the destroyer class so you can get to the assault frigates and all that stuff easier. Assault classes and support classes a little bit easier. And they were like, yeah, um, not everybody is a physicist. They're not going to need to know. They're not even going to know that that training would be important unless we tell them to. <laughs> they're actually like taking, they're taking stuff out because it's too in-depth. Yeah. <clears throat> so. <laughs> all I right. Th I um, think that back up. <laughs> Well, we're just about at the full hour mark. Um, I right. think we've got a lot of important discussion here, a lot of topics that I really wanted to get to, we did cover. And I don't think there's anything that we missed. So Yeah, no, we covered quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. This will be All the right. first Dust chat that we've had. Um, and of course there's going to be more of these you know as more details are released the more that we know about the game the more that we're going to have to talk about so um, this is just going to be another part of the dust series and i'll have these you know as frequently as we get the information we'll probably do some videos of course they won't all be a full hour long this is our initial one so there was a lot of things that we to need to cover yeah so from here on out these videos will be shorter um and hopefully we'll you know be able to rotate out the speakers and i'll get some different guests on here as well but um i'm sure that you know there's going to come a time where i'll send you guys an email or or get a hold of you somehow and say hey you know get your asses back on here we're going to do a part two but um we'll take care of that when that time comes like i said when we get the updates the yeah. warrant another video but uh thank you guys so much for joining me and taking the time out really to, to talk about the game yeah, thanks for asking oh, me out. My pleasure. Yeah. Um, right. So thank you everybody for watching as well. I know it's been a long one. Uh, any further questions that you guys have, you can contact us either through the ATC Facebook page or comment directly on the video because I do respond to those. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button for further updates when we have them. And we'll see you guys on the battlefield. Take care.